So really, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, design and a little bit about uh, user experience, or um, otherwise known as UX. And basically, the goal is in really big font. Um, I want to um, help uh, everyone on the team um, get some basic understanding and basic knowledge about um, some design principles and some um, good user experience um, best practices. And uh, it's really just to help everyone on the team um, work towards one common goal just so that we can deliver a kind of top quality product and um, not just like about code but um, every single element of it. So it's just stuff that we see, stuff our users um, interact with and and I'm going to go over some very basic elements of it since it's only half an hour. Um, so this is kind of the agenda to prepare you for uh, what I'm going to be talking about. And um, let's begin. So uh, I guess uh, I went over this a little bit in the goal, but uh, really I think no matter what discipline you are, um, you should really be keeping in mind um, what the optimal and like best um, design practices and user experience um, <coughs> goals are. And uh, if you do that, then uh, you don't have to go back and try to like correct for it. Um, you have it in mind from the very beginning. And um, as you're uh, writing code or designing products, um, you have these like top priorities. So I guess backtracking. Um, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is like a lot of the design principles um, that we um, think about today, um, both from the engineering perspective and from like product design perspective, are all kind of uh, the same in the end. It's all about um, making sure that we have um, a product that in the end is, you know, really easy to use and um, is consistent and uh, we have some sort of um, prioritization and hierarchy within elements um, and we're also able to keep in mind like flexibility for things that um, we might need to think about that are like either edge cases or scenarios that we haven't uh, thought about from the very beginning. Okay so this is in no way like a um, exhaustive list of like kind of design principles that um, that exists, but these are the ones that I'm going to briefly go over today. And uh, so we'll start with kind of the biggest and I also want to say like easiest thing that we can fix um, and keep in mind, which is alignment. This is uh, a screenshot of our current uh, elections game and um, overlaid on top of it are all these kind of grid lines that I've drawn to um, let you see where elements are aligned with one another. I think Baird's done a pretty good job <laughs> of uh, keeping a lot of elements aligned but um, like very small things here um, I think this is like a new feature that was just put in recently, but um, you can see that it's like a little bit off. So something like that, you know, where it's just a few pixels here and there. Um, if when you're actually coding the element up, um, you should know that it should probably be aligned with the rest of the text within that element. And um, also, you know, like vertical alignment, um, making sure elements have like a nice strong edge and that'll really help with cleaning up uh, what the page looks like. Um, and sometimes, like, people might think, you know, a few pixels here, a few pixels there, it doesn't really matter, but it really helps um, make the product look polished and, um, and thus the user is, you know, more trustworthy of um, feeling that they're using, like, a finished product. Uh, here's another thing. This is probably more um, nebulous idea um, and concept, um, but uh, I think most people have heard of it. Um, so we're talking about white space. It doesn't have to be white per se. It's really just the negative space that exists 
within um, or around elements that um, you have on uh, a page. And um, the reason why white space is important is because it helps uh, break apart um, visually you know, the elements on the page so that, uh, in a sense, elements kind of can breathe, that they're not like cluttered together and they don't feel like they're um, stuck. Um, so this is a very subtle difference. I was trying to find real examples from the site. But um, so this is Meet Me um, currently on our, on our website. And this is Meet Me for the Facebook app. Now, it's pretty much um, it's the same. But just um, so you can't really see, but there's actually like borders around all these and you know the spacing here. Um, it's just not a lot of white space to kind of break apart um, some of the text and visual elements. Um, and even just something, you know, as simple as, you know, adding like 15, 20 um, pixels of padding uh, between text elements can really help uh, make the page uh, a lot easier to parse. Um, and really like from person to person, uh, the amount it kind of varies, but in general, um, there's like like rules of thumb that we can reference, and hopefully, as we define um, things uh, as part of a style guide for tag, we can reference those. Um, and I'll talk about that later. Uh, okay, so color. This is actually a um, image that I pulled from. The web, but I think it um, helps like encapsulate some of uh, the main aspects of color theory. And uh, tagged currently, you know, we don't really have um, like a color th scheme that we've kind of been using. It's mostly just black and white and whatever um, elements, um, like for links or for um, for like within a game that like we've defined specifically. So. Um, with, uh, with creating like new products in mind, I guess. Um, if we want to introduce color, um, we can use it um, to our advantage by um, looking at the color wheel. <laughs> so uh, kind of going back to like color basics, you know, there are your primary colors, your secondary colors, tertiary colors, and then there are um, what we call like complementary colors, which are colors that are opposite to one another, and that's really good for uh, bringing out uh, kind of contrast and um, uh, making like elements um, stand out against one another. Or you can have analogous colors, which are colors that are next to each other, and uh, this will help in um, kind of unifying elements that are supposed to be part of like one theme. Um, so they're also, you know, kind of more, I wouldn't say advanced, but um, other ways of Picking colors that um, can help um, create a more uh, holistic kind of experience. Whether you want really bold colors to represent, you know, specific emotion while a user is using a website, or you know, more neutral colors when you want them to be um, not as like uh, not as intense. But um, depending on the use case, um, color can be used. Uh, to have like a really great effect. Um, and I just like to be wary of like what colors you use and not just randomly choosing them. So that um, kind of brings us to um, contrast. So we can, um, in addition to using color to create contrast, there's also you know, all, all different other types of things like size and layout. Um, but really, um, when contrast is used correctly, it can um, help uh, like bring the user's eye to what's really important on a page and um, you have to be able to um, kind of use contrast in a way that like that um, makes makes elements uh, stand out and um, it shouldn't be super distracting um, and it should um, really be uh, you know aiding the different elements on the page um, so this is our mobile landing page, and um, really there's not much on it, but 
um, because, well, the colors aren't too, they're kind of, you know, washed out. But um, these are actually like quite um, bright blue and um, your eyes are kind of drawn to those buttons. And so the contrast of blue against the white background really help um, draw your eye towards, um, these are like our call to action buttons down here. So now we're talking about like hierarchy. So um, hierarchy can also work um, with all the other elements to help um, the users understand what is most important on a page. Um, in this case, uh, using size, like the first thing that people probably notice is this um, tagline of like, I think you can work at tags. And then um, as you go down further in the page, you'll see that, you know, um, we have like challenges as a heading and, you know, a list of whatever the design challenges are. So um, it seems pretty, I don't know, maybe it's straightforward that you would have um, larger font for headings and smaller things as you go deeper and deeper into like specific elements. But um, sometimes when you have like a busier page, um, stepping back and thinking what your uh, visual hierarchy needs to be will help you um, uh, figure out you know, which elements should be more prominent. Um, and size is not always um, the only thing you can use, the placement of the page, you know, where the eyes are drawn. There's like a natural tendency to obviously go from the top of the page down and uh, left to right if you're in countries that are left to right and right to left if your country is from right to left. I want to go on and talk about consistency. Consistency um, across like multiple elements is really important, not just like layout, but um, it also helps um, uh, get a sense of what uh, the theme of um, a product is or, um, or it even can help like strengthen a brand to make sure that there's consistency within that. Um, this, uh, I mean, there are probably a lot of examples on, on this site just because of legacy issues that we have kind of inconsistent um, uh, behavior. Um, one that I'm showing right here is just like ad placement. Um, I understand there's probably like reasons behind why we have it placed in certain places like above or below the header, but um, it definitely um, makes the header itself jump up and down and uh, it's just an example of like layout inconsistency that we have on the site. Um, if you click through from like home to um, like messages to people, you'll you'll see that like things jump. So um, again, there's like probably a lot of places that we can probably improve. This gets to um, priorities, and um, a lot of this kind of um, uh, relates to uh, trying to figure out what is like the core and the top um, elements or um, features or goals that you want when you're designing a product, whether it be like a page or um, like a pop-up or uh, a form. Um, anything that's like extraneous from the main elements um, end up just being distractions or um, end up confusing the user. I know a lot of people, you know, be like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we added this? And what if users need that? Like, shouldn't we not put in it, that in? And um, eventually what you get to sometimes is you get this, like, monstrosity where you have everything and the original, like, goal gets lost. Yeah, so making sure what your top priorities are, uh, I think, are, is super important to help um, simplify the design and, in that case, also makes the um, experience a lot easier and uh, easy to use in the end. So that was kind of more um, the aesthetics and design of a page. This is, these are um, a list of um, kind of uh, best practices that I like to use um, when um, thinking about the user experience. If you were to map out what, uh, whatever you're trying to build and figure out um, how a user might go from step one to step two to step three, and how it might relate to like existing pages. And then you're able to figure out if 
that flow actually makes sense. So whether you can move forward or do you like step back and um, rethink the problem and try to design like a more uh, like optimized flow. A lot of this can be helped by figuring out what the main user scenario is. Sometimes this is really clear, but I think a lot of times, um, you know, we're not very sure what um, this might be. And um, maybe there's, you know, four or five different use scenarios. Maybe there's only one. Trying to figure out, you know, which one to focus on will help you um, kind of drill down to see, like, which elements and what, um, uh, what flows you should uh, to use. To go along with that, even just figuring who your user is is super important. A lot of times, uh, even just like working here at Tagged, I've been a little confused as to who exactly I'm designing for. Because sometimes I hear, um, you know, we're the uh, average 35-year-old and, you know, middle America kind of user, but like, what does that mean? Like, um, we also want to try to target, you know, um, a lot more people and expand our user base. And like, what does that mean? It's like, are we... Um, are we targeting someone who's like super active on Facebook already, or are we targeting someone who only uses the mobile phone? I mean, so just figuring out and kind of narrowing down um, what your top user is will help you um, also uh, clear, be more clear about uh, what your optimal user experience should be. So once you've like figured out who the user is, um, um, put them kind of back through the flow that you defined previously and. Um, see if they can actually complete the task. If you feel like you know it would be too hard, or they might run into um, you know some uh, some parts where it's confusing, then uh, then you can re-examine. A lot of users are just kind of lazy. If we design products that are um, kind of super simple to use and you really don't have to think about it, then you don't have to um, rely on the user to. Uh, make connection to think, oh, this means that. Um, it should just work. And um, whenever we like make assumptions that, oh, well, they should get it, um, sometimes then you have to realize, like, what does that mean? Like, what are some of the consequences that come out of making that assumption? Um, but in general, if you, if you design it and you think of, um, the product as something the user can use without thinking at all, then you've succeeded. Usually, if it's a tax-driven um, feature, like um, like the registration page or um, some, uh, uh, you know, adding friends, there's, um, there's kind of a call to action. And a lot of times, it's a big button or it's a link. But it's kind of the main focus that you want really all the users to click on. And um, you, sometimes if there's like too many calls to actions on the page, um, for whatever reason, then the user uh, has to think. <laughs> and that goes back to like making the user not have to think. Um, and to help with that, you know, you can really just dumb it down and only include the essentials um, so that there's no distractions. How do we? accomplish some of the things I mentioned um, previously. So this is something that I've talked to a lot of people about and something that we just really need to start building um, is to have uh, a style guide. I know we have s some um, common elements like that we're using, um, like uh, I think the, the pop over box um, is being used now like across the site. One thing that I want to create is maybe like a main CSS file that has references to um, like fonts and padding and colors that uh, that you don't have to specify on like a uh, case by case basis. You can just say I'm using the primary text color or whatever we end up calling it, and that'll end up being you know like black, I guess. <laughs> Or like spacing, it'd be like 20 pixels for medium spacing and like 40 pixels for large spacing. And that'll really help um, uh, with consistency. And also I think it would make it a lot easier when you do need to change something um, that you only need to change it in one place.
along with that, um, having common controls for the site. And this is not an exhaustive list at all. Buttons, navigation, tabs. To go along with that style guide, we used to maybe use a grid system, and we've since kind of deterred from it. Um, and I would really push to maybe try to put that in place again. Um, one of the most common ones is this 960 grid. Um, tag is currently built with uh, 960 pixels as our, as our width. And uh, the reason behind that is that because it's, you can easily um, divide um, the page into um, any which like combination of layouts that um, you know that you can define and usually each of these common columns if you're using a 12 column grid will be 60 pixels with um, each having a margin of 10 pixels and what that makes is like the gutters bet between here because it's like 10 and 10 they'll be 20 pixels so all the elements should um, naturally just align and um, hopefully that will solve some of the previous things I mentioned about like alignment and consistency. So this is the website that you can go to, one of I think a few out there, um, and they have like CSS templates that we can use, or I don't know if we would like create our own or just throw it out there. <laughs> Responsive web, now for those of you who haven't heard of this term, um, it's really creating a website that can dynamically um, uh, update their layout and content depending on whatever size the user is viewing it in. So this is important because you know more and more so people are viewing um, our site um, on the uh, on a mobile device and um, potentially even like tablets. But in addition to um, uh, our traditional desktop um, view, so. Um, if we kind of start with the idea that um, we design for like mobile first or the content will be resized, then um, we'll be kind of ahead of the game and like we won't have to create you know four different versions of our site for um, every which um, screen size that is available. So a good example of that is the Boston Globe just recently uh, redid their site. And um, you can go to it and check it out and just try, like, try to resize the window. Um, this would be like, you know, if you have like a normal screen. And as you like resize it so the width is smaller, um, the header like groups together until it becomes, you know, just a few um, couple tabs. And then, um, you know, photos um, get deprecated and you really just um, have, you really just see like the top news article and um, I think it was done like quite gracefully. Oh and in the end users are number one so keep that in mind. So um, Itai is wondering how do I um, combine the 960 um, idea with the responsive web idea um, and I think that they actually work hand in hand because uh, even though you uh, start with the 960 you can probably design it so that um, you take percentages of that and you still use the same columns that exist um, uh, in the, the larger view. So um, for instance, if you have like 12 columns, when you get down to eight columns, you go to, you go to this design, you go down to six columns, you go to this design. Um, and I guess potentially be a, a nice engineering problem for you guys to solve.